the fish, the pig, the gorilla, the bear, the dog, the bird, the cat, the horse, the duck, the rat. Any others? Of course, but here's a quick review. <laughs> Listen, your rubber muzzle right here. Old rats on a new ship. What's this, the fucking UN now? Wanna go to the zoo? To answer your question, Johnny Sack, yes, this is the animal UN now. And there are a few more animals we have to talk about. Aquaria. This is a Poverty of the Mezzagiorno special. You might be asking yourself, why does this matter? Isn't The Sopranos a show about the Mafia? What are you, trying to be like the next mafiosa Steve Irwin or something? The fact is, humans aren't just like animals. Humans are animals. Sometimes this is illustrated pretty explicitly, like here in the season 5 finale where we see Tony walking back through the bushes almost looking like one of those eastern black bears. I always think. Really? I see some guy walking down the street, you know, with a, with a clear head. You know the type. He's always fucking whistling, like the happy fucking wanderer. And I just want to go up to him and I just want to rip his throat open. I want to fucking grab him and pummel him right there for no reason. Maybe Darwin was right. Nature really does weed out the nimrods. <laughs> you should talk. And just like there are stereotypes and misunderstandings about some of the animals I've discussed in these videos, that rings true for people just the same. All are locked in deadly conflict. Anyway, let's get back to the rest of those animals. The deer. I know I mentioned this before, but the deer really did Tony a solid in helping him catch the rat. Up next, Rusty Irish, not a bird. What are you gonna do with these fucking animals, these, these drug dealers? Up next, the rabbit. Did the Cusimano kids ever find $50,000 in Krugerrands and a 45 automatic while they were hunting for Easter eggs? Speaking of Easter eggs... God damn it. That poor rabbit had some bad, bad timing there. Up next, the snakes. The amazing thing about snakes is that they reproduce spontaneously. That's why somebody you don't trust, you call a snake. Chrissy said team made a killing in real estate down Fiedenheisen. That assemblyman guy hyped him to it. So just for the record, I love Tony Sirico and I love Polly Walnuts, the character. With that said, Tony Sirico was very adamant about not playing a rat on the show, and he didn't, but he did know how to play one hell of a snake. It's easy to forget just how close we came to DeMeo Lupertazzi family bloodshed in season four after Polly told Johnny Sack about the Ginny Sack mole joke. It was only because of that last minute turn of events that bloodshed was avoided. For then, at least. You know, things might be a little different, Polly. You could accept some responsibility for a change. Nobody knows what the future holds, my friend. Shady much? But it's not just the gentleman. Boy, you listen to that, Janice. Be very careful, because she's a real snake in the grass. My mother, though, she could lay out in the weeds for days, years, waiting to strike. I suppose the feeling is mutual. Geologists. Don't you think that expression will come from the Adam and Eve story? When the snake tempted Eve to bite the apple, hey, snakes were fucking themselves long before Adam and Eve showed up to you. Next up, Richie April. You Parmesan sandwich. Well, you know what comes next. You gonna let that animal get away with this? Last we heard, Richie April was in the can, but then... Someone leave a cage open at Turtleback Zoo? You said he wasn't going to bother me, Tony. <laughs> Jesus. Probably well, the remote is down there somewhere, too. It's on the shelves. 
Hello, Mrs. Thank you for TV. Oh, Stashu, please enjoy. By the way, I don't know exactly how Tony could have pulled this off without knowing Richie was going to their house at that time, but that was just like perfect timing with Stasi walking in at that moment when Richie was sitting with Carmela. When Tony realizes that Richie Apriel definitely wants him out of the picture, he consults his wise, trusted consigliere, Silvio Dante, who tells him there's really no use keeping Richie around at this point. But you shut up! But just because he's a ballroom dancer, you think your son is gay? And what if he was gay? What difference does it make? That's what happens when you don't follow your own rules, Richie. But we know that when it comes to the Soprano family, we can always count on them to do the right thing. Which is why they buried Richie on a hill, overlooking a little river, with pine cones all around. Can you believe that? And speaking of Richie, that gets us into our next animal, the shark. Do you know why a shark keeps moving? They gotta keep moving or they'll die. They can't breathe or something. There's a psychological condition known as elixithymia, common in certain personalities. So here in House Arrest, season two, episode 11, Tony's talking to Dr. Melfi about Richie April, who's become a real problem. And she uses the shark to introduce elixithymia. Now, Tony, of course, is thinking of Richie here, but he's failing to realize that he also may fall in that category. My future brother-in-law. Ran over a guy. No reason. Guy's paralyzed. Has to piss into a cathode tube. Next up, some can't even say his name. You and Tony Egg again. Tony Egg. Tony B. John, how long I gotta wait? Tony Soprano left to his own device. He's never gonna give up that fucking animal blundetto. What made Tony B such a tragic character for me was that he was really determined to go down a different path when he got released from the can. He wanted to get his massage license, open his own parlor, go into business, but, you know, on the straight and narrow path above board, not just using the massage parlor as a front for something else. But then circumstances happened as they did, and it became too hard to say no to money that was available. Tony B's first unsanctioned killing was of Joey Peeps at the end of season five, episode eight, Marco Polo. Oh, they got so far, she's got a bad limp. Huh, Long John Silver, maybe. And then he kills Billy Leotardo. Tony Soprano left to his own device. He's never going to give up that fucking animal blundetto. Really? An eye for an eye? With Tony B... The Joey Peeps kill felt like it was based on a mix of reason and instinct, whereas the killing of Billy Leotardo felt much more driven by instinct. I don't think it was a good idea for Tony B to kill Joey Peeps, but at least it was something that he had thought about, whereas his killing of Billy Leotardo was directly in response to finding out that Billy and Phil had killed Angelo. And in the end, Lewis clapped him in irons. Just kidding, but Tony Soprano did have to kill Tony B so that the Lupertazzi family wouldn't torture him. Up next, AJ Soprano. What does that smell? What kind of animal smokes marijuana at his own confirmation? The wall of pride. What kind of animals? So here we are in AJ's therapy session with his parents. Well, how about my confirmation? You called me an animal. So in season 6, episode 19, The Second Coming, AJ's hospitalized after a suicide attempt. To me, the fact that AJ brings up this animal comment in the same episode in which he attempted suicide goes to show the impact that it had on him. Now, speaking of another animal associated with a sad ending, next... The goat. What is that, a goat? Yeah, that's so friend. <laughs> While the goat looked sweet with Pio, Mai, and Tony, it represents something much darker here in season four, episode nine, whoever did this. Can you guess which human is associated with the devil in this episode? Beautiful, creature. What did she ever do to you? 
but maybe it's not just Ralph. So, the big picture. Animals fight tooth and claw to win food, territory, and rights to the bloodline. Aw, with the animals shaped like letters. Can't I just be sad for a horse without some touchy, feely, forty and shit component to it? Considering this is The Sopranos, I'm gonna pull a Jimmy Bones and say the answer is... No. So, the big picture. If you think of the food chain in an ecological sense, it refers to the sequence of transfers of matter and energy in the form of food from organism to organism. And with humans, there's also a food chain. Whether it's food, money, power, influence, other materials, and it's often a kill-or-be-killed atmosphere. Very literally in the sense of organized crime, but metaphorically speaking in most other areas of society. The Popeye says, I am what I am. And even though we may not have formal migration patterns like some other animals, the question of who am I, where am I going, that's a lifelong question that's relevant to all of us. Thanks for watching.